No, it wasn't the best we've ever done. CBBC, BBC, no code K, email them at your hometown and why you think it deserves to go on this glorious map. We might even make a shoddy memory out of it. Do it, wake up, man! Right now, a man is from, where's Vic Reeves from? Leeds. <laughs> Leeds, in the Ministry of Curious Stuff. Goodbye to you. To you all. See ya. Here at the Ministry of Curious Stuff, we seek to answer any question you may ask. No question is too ridiculous. On call are our highly curious researchers, Lovett, Wanamaker, Fraser Nagel, Tea Party, and of course, Captain Lengthman. The Ministry is a thinking facility that helps us to find you an answer. The working day will commence in 10 seconds. Don't be late. Attention, Mr. Reeves is entering the building. Welcome to the Ministry of Curious Stuff. Captain Lengthwin, yes. I was wondering if we might practice for Britain's Got Talent, the flute piece. Flute piece. Yes, I've been practicing all night. So Good, I'm so have I. Really up to speed. You ready? Yes, of Here course. we go then. No, 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 no. What's up the gradient? Is that like a one in three gradient, that? That's as flat as I go. Well, no, it's not. That's too dangerous to drive a car down. Now, can you just slacken it off to about a one in seven? Right. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. What now? That's about one in five, yes, Matt. That's right. Can't you get it flat? No. That's as low as I go. Forget it then. Let's forget the whole thing. Forget it. Just forget it. Forget it. If you can't manage to have a one in seven or even flatter, then I am not interested in doing this performance. Well, then we will agree to go our separate ways. Well, maybe we should. Yes, we should. <laughs> Mr. Frasenagel, put the first call through, please. Right you are, Mr. Reeves. I've got a brilliant call coming through on line two. Hello, this is Vic Reeves here at the Ministry of Curious Stuff. How might I help you? Hello, my name is Clara, and I've got two questions. Can you dance on the moon? Thank you, Clara. What a very, very exciting question. Thank you. Goodbye. That's a goodbye. Clara wants to know... Can you dance on the moon? Oh, Captain Lengthwick. Yeah. That reminds me of the story of Alan and Kitty. Do you remember them? I remember them very well, yeah. Hi, Al. What Thank you doing? You. you know, Kitty, I'm just staring up at the stars. Yeah. That's where I want to be, you know? It's a long way up there, Al. Yeah, I know it is. But I just want to be on that moon, collecting dust. Alan, how long are you going to keep up this accent? You know, you can have some dust out of my over bag if you want. I know that, love, but I, I do want to go to the moon, if it's at all humanly possible. Well, maybe one day, but mm. not today, eh? Mm. Best get off to work. All right, love. Well, I'll see you back here at seven o'clock for tea. All right, all right. All right. It'll be on the table. Right. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Ah, I'll just never lie down. All right. Do you know what? Can you dance on the moon? What we need is an astronaut to ask. An astronaut. A giant leap for mankind coming through in G1, Mr. Reeves. Famous astronaut loading in G1. Wow! It's Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon coming out of his airlock. Whoa! So good to meet you, Neil. Where's your trumpet? Oh, no, that's Louis Armstrong. Sorry, <laughs> I get that a lot. Yeah, no, it's not Louis. <laughs> So, when you were on the moon, was there much dancing involved? Uh, no. Uh, there's no dancing on the moon. It's forbidden, prohibited, not allowed. Um, I'm not at home to Mrs. I want to dance on the moon. All right, and who made you the moon police then? Oh, the people who gave me this badge. It is with great pride that I became moon sheriff, and it is my duty to ensure that the moon is treated with the dignity that she deserves. That means no barbecues, no late night parties, no ball games, and certainly no dancing. It's, uh, it's disrespectful. Sounds like a hoot. Well, it's, it's not meant to be fun. It's a scientific research site. So yeah. if I was on the moon yeah. and I started doing this... Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't like it, though? I, I would not. I would not take kindly to it, sir. No. The moonwalk. All the moons. What about if I took it up a notch a bit like this? 
Huh? Like, you must like that. Please, please stop that, sir. Come on. Please stop that, sir. You like it. I don't like oh, it. Oh, I've just got so excited about the moon. I understand that. She is quite an enchanting goddess, but uh, don't don't be doing that again, please. Yeah. What about if I, you know, do a bit of that? No, Come no, on, no, 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 Come on, do a little bit of that. Stop, stop that, please. Get with it. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. I did not take one giant leap for mankind for people like you to do dances like that. <laughs> oh, he really does love the moon, doesn't he? Well, I think that probably answers Clara's question. You can't dance on the moon because Neil Armstrong, the sheriff of the moon, won't allow it. And he takes quads one at Mr. Reeves. There's no such thing as a moon, sheriff. Ah, now that's good news, isn't it? Because we were thinking of holding a rave up on the moon this weekend, weren't we? Yeah, I know, and I've already sent out 500,000 invites, and my hand is really aching, so I'm really glad that that is not cancelled. Well, carry on sending all the other invitations, because it's back on again. <laughs> so, come on, let's answer Clara's question. Can we dance on the moon? Uh, well, Mr Reeves, here is a very curious space fact for you. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know you can only survive for 30 seconds in space without a spacesuit on? And what happens after 30 seconds? Well, there's no oxygen, so you'd suffocate. Well, that doesn't bother me. I can hold my breath for 30 seconds. Oh, well, Mr Reeves, you can hold your breath all you like, but uh, the change in air pressure would cause your lungs to be ripped apart in your chest. <laughs> And then, because there's no atmosphere to hold all the liquid in your body together, your saliva would boil on your tongue. <gasps> You'd be hit by orbiting debris hurtling through space. <laughs> and with the temperature of space being minus 148 degrees, your body would freeze. <gasps> oh, sounds disgusting! <laughs> Right, let's move swiftly on. Can we answer this question? For Clara, can we dance on the moon? Well, Mr Reeves, I'm not quite sure about dancing, but you can actually play golf on the moon. No, no, no playing golf on the moon. No, sorry, it's prohibited. Don't listen to him. Carry on, Mr Lovett. Well, it would appear, Mr Reeves, that there are actually golf balls on the moon. Wow, golf balls on the moon. Imagine that. Hitting a golf ball from the Earth to the moon, that's got to be some kind of record, isn't it, Captain Linkford? Yes, it is, Mr Reeves, and when I hear a record like that, then I just have to go for it. You always do. Mm. Well, whilst you're practising, yeah. I'm just going to go and pick something up round here that I've seen. OK. Ah, yes, there it is. There. I'll go. just bend over and pick it up. OK, here we go. Oh! Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Mr Reeves. Did I make the moon? In a manner of speaking, yes. Only a few hundred thousand miles out. Oh. Do us the honours, would you? What? Do us uh, the honours. No, I, I don't think so. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Mr Reeves, you've got it wrong. In 1971, astronaut Alan Shepard played golf on the moon. And because of the low gravity, he managed to hit one ball 400 yards. Very clever, but what we want to know is, can you dance on the moon, not can you play golf on the moon? Come on, what else have we discovered? Uh, well, Mr. Rees, I'm not sure if you can dance in a space suit, um, but there's definitely something a bit more smelly that you shouldn't do in one. Ooh, really? Now, that's what I call an outfit, sweetheart. You look bad. Beauts! The girls will be well, Joe. OK. Going anywhere nice? Uh, space? Out of this world. Literally. Don't be seen dead without it. Although you would be dead without it in space. <laughs> what about wind? Oh, 100% waterproof and windproof. Not that you need to worry. There's no weather in space, no rain or wind. <laughs> Although, you don't want to get wind inside if you know what I mean. Because if you bottom burp in your snazzy airtight spacesuit, you'll be stuck with it all the way home. <laughs> Imagine that! Flying all the way to the moon and back with a stinking brute in your space flight suit. <laughs> Ooh. Still, that doesn't answer Clara's question. More facts, please! Well, this could be a very important fact, Mr. Reeves. There's no sound in space, so you'd have no music to dance to. Hmm, explain further. Well, sound waves can't travel in space because space is a vacuum. No sound, no music. 
No dancing. Mm. I mean, even if you were happy to dance without music, there's so little gravity on the moon, you'd find it hard to do anything than dance really, really slowly. Slow dancing. Slow dancing? Well, I love slow dancing. I know you're somewhere out there, somewhere far away. I want you back. I want you back. Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong, may I? Oh, of course. Thank you. Talking to the moon. Right, so let's wrap this up. I think we can safely say that, yes, you can dance on the moon as long as you like slow dancing and no music and you've got a space suit. Very good. Right, could you get that information off to Clara as soon as possible, please, Miss Teaspoon? Party. Attention, attention. Flying Postal Services entering the Ministry. Please have your post prepared for the postal personnel upon arrival. Postal person descending. Postal person descending. Please stand back. Postal service reaching its destination in three, two, one. Postal service is departing. Stand clear. The post will be delivered in approximately 2 minutes and 32 seconds. Thank you for using flying postal services. Float northwards, envoy of the vault of heaven. Right, Frasenagel, how are the switchboards? They're very busy, Mr. Reeves. We have a call coming through on line one. Connecting you now. Thank you. Hello, this is Vic Reeves here at the Ministry of Curious Stuff. How may I help you? Hello, my name is Camilla. I was wondering, can you eat poo? <laughs> Thank you, Camilla, for your delightful question. I don't think... Camilla wants to know... I don't know how to put this. Can you eat poo? Ah, what? Exactly. I've never heard something so... Extraordinary in my life. Exactly. I've done a lot of things, but I've never done that. No, I've never done that either. What things have you done? Well, I've made a sausage roll. I made a wolf whistle. I've seen a barn dance. I've made a horse fly. But, but we've, we've never, never eaten poo. <laughs> right, come on then. What facts have we got? I'm not sure about eating it, but hippos use their poo to find their way. They leave a trail of it so that they don't get lost on their way home. I followed a trail of excrement once, and let me tell you, it didn't lead anywhere good. In Africa, cow pats are dried and turned into bricks to make houses, and, and here in the UK, traditional cob cottages are built using a mixture of soil, cow poo and water. Hmm. So, kids, if your parents say they're putting a deposit on a house, it's not what they mean. <laughs> right, come on. Let's get serious now. Can we eat poo? Well, here's a curious toilet fact, Mr. Reeves. On average, us humans spend three years of our lives on the bog. Three years on the bog? Is that really true? Something coming through in X5, Mr. Reeves. <laughs> Laboratory user loading in X5. Ah! Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Who are you? Phil Packham. Dare I ask, what are you doing there? Oh, well, the average human spends nearly three years of their life on the toilet. So I decided that I would get my three years out of the way in one go. I've been here for nearly two years and six months, so there's only six months left, and then I will never have to go to the toilet ever again. Yeah, well, I'm not sure it quite works like that. What do you mean? I don't think you can get all your lifetimes bog-sitting done in one sitting. Isn't that right, Mr Wanamaker? Yes, that's right, Mr Reeves. 
Are you joking? No. You mean I've wasted nearly three years of my life for nothing? Yep. Oh well. I suppose I ought to get up then. <laughs> yeah, I would. Oh, Ooh, steady. Mm. It's fine. Don't worry. My legs are just a little bit stiff. <laughs> Haven't used them for nearly two and a half years. Um, what's happened is I do actually now need to use the toilet. So can you? Uh, Oh, uh, sorry, Phil, I'm a little bit busy. Do you know what? All that talk of eating's made me really peckish. I'm just going to nip off to the Ministry Canteen. Sort that out. OK. Oh, that's running down my legs. Get up! Hello, Mrs Dollop. It's Mrs Delope, Mr Reeves. Get it right. Delope, sorry. Now, what delights have you got in the canteen for me today? I've got something here you are going to love. Yeah, what is it? Civet coffee. Civet coffee? It's the most expensive coffee in the world. Go on, try it, go on, try it. All right. What is it? Civet coffee is made from coffee beans. Yeah. It's fed to this little weasel thing. Yeah. Then it pulls it out and turns it into a lovely cappuccino. So I've been drinking poo out of a weasel. Do you think that's disgusting? Yeah. I think you're disgusting. Get out of my canteen. I think I'll leave it. <sighs> Come on, wakey, wakey. Now then, Mrs Dollop informs me that you can drink poo, but the question is, can you eat poo? Uh, well, uh, yes, you can, Mr Reeves, if you're an elephant. <laughs> It is not unusual for an elephant calf to be seen eating from its mother's poo. I hope you're hungry. I've been slaving over a hot toilet all day. Hmm. Finished. That was a wonderful poo, Mum. Well done. Ten out of ten. My compliments to the chef's bum. Would you like a second helping? I wouldn't say no. Eat it all and you can have dessert. What's for dessert? Have a guess. Well, you know what? That makes me so pleased that I'm not an elephant. It really does. Hey! Hmm? Captain Lengthwith, do you remember we used to keep elephants? Yes, I remember. They used to roam around the garden. Yeah, and then we call the names and they'd come running towards us. Yeah, but we'd have to clean them out and that yeah. was a bit of a pain. But do you remember when one of them got killed by a fox? Yeah. It was nice to eat their eggs every morning, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was, yeah. No, it was chickens. It's chickens. It is chickens. It's it an right. easy mistake to It make. is an easy mistake, yeah. Right, let's answer Camilla's question. Can we eat poo? Well, Mr Reeves, you can eat your poo if you're an elephant, but if you're a human, you should never eat poo because it can make you very, very ill. In fact, it's best just to have a cucumber sandwich instead. Yes, it is. Right, we'll get those findings off to Camilla. Pronto, please, Miss Deepati. Thank you. Yes, Mr Reeves. Flying Postal Services has arrived. Post prepared for postal personnel. Thank you for using Flying Postal Services, your number one aerial courier. Farewell, Condor of the Postal Atmosphere. Right, Fraser Nagel, time for one final call. Who's on the lines? Call on line three, Mr Reeves. I'll put you through now. Thank you. Hello, this is Vic Reeves of the Ministry of Courier Stuff. How might I help you today? Hello, my name's Matthew, and my question is, do flying monkey soldiers exist? Oh, oh, Matthew, thank you for that question. Thank you. Goodbye. Matthew wants to know, do flying monkey soldiers exist? Hmm. Mm. Flying monkey soldiers, eh? Warriors, if you will. If they did exist, my goodness, they'd be tough and strong and curious. Try to sell! Stations, everyone! What a moment! What it mean? Right, okay then. Right, listen. Fry monkey warrior soldier. I will teach you how to do it. You're a student, I'm a master. Okay, listen, master, are you going to teach me how to do this? I don't want no specific move. I just want to know ballpark. You can't just do the ballpark. You've got to do the old course. It takes for years. Oh, wow. I will get on with it. Right, okay. Here I was on move. What's that down there? Where? There. Move one. 
Oh. All right, yeah. what's that down there? Where? There. Ah, Move to. Oh, these moves are lethal coming out of blue. Absolutely out of nowhere. Yeah. Final move. Oh. What's that there? Where? Oh, cheeky monkey. Yeah. Okay, okay. I got a move for you, what you've never seen before in your life. Right. What's that there? Where? There. Oh, oh yeah. You are good. Yeah. You yeah. are made a very yeah. good frying monkey warrior soldier. You was yesterday's monkey. I am new monkey on the block. All right, all right. Don't get too Okay. Okay. Take it easy. Okay. You're very good. Thank Go you. to rock, kid. Thank you. Oh, oh, God. God. oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Like. And that is exactly what flying monkey soldiers are like. You don't have to tell me that. I detected Cod's wallet, Mr. Reeves. You made that up. Quite right, Wanamaker. Well spotted. Well spotted indeed. That was entirely made up, I'm afraid. So let's get some real facts for Matthew. Do flying monkey soldiers exist? Uh, well, Mr. Reeves, I don't know about flying monkey soldiers, but uh, there are some other winged soldiers. Yeah. Uh, parrots. Parrots? But they're not soldiers. Yes, they were. Oh, really? Uh, listen to this. Uh, during World War I, parrots were stationed on top and inside of the Eiffel Tower so they could give warning of enemy aircraft approaching, but unfortunately uh, they didn't do a very good job of it. Yeah, well, that would be because they couldn't hold the binoculars in their little parroty wings. What they should have had is this. It's the Parrot Vision 3000. Captain! It's a marvellous piece of equipment. No, this really is the latest in parrot binocular harness technology. Yeah. Now, look here. Mm -hmm. We've got binoculars attached to this harness here, which is really beautifully crafted in faux leather. What this ensures is that with the harness, there's absolutely no chafing for the animal itself. I can see that as I look underneath the harness, I can see mm. there's absolutely no chafing No, at there all. won't be any chafing because no, this... Very special. You well, can just that. write it down in your pad. Yeah, and I've noticed that this pad here is actually mm. attached to the, the, the clipboard, which is made of Luminex. That's Luminex, that's a Luminex mix, and a very, very delicate spring action there. Yeah. Mr. Reeves! And this is actually made that. of mahogany, this. But the box is made of uh, where's this parrot come from? Is it from, uh, He's from Costa Rica? Costa Rica, yeah. yeah. His name is Paul. Um, and for the first 500 callers, you received the presentation box free, and yeah, my cousin Whitaker will give your parrot a uh, a free pedicure. Mr. Reeves. Yes, Mr. what is it? Mr. Reeves. What? That's not the reason why the parrots weren't very good. It was because they couldn't tell the difference between an enemy plane and their own. So we just wasted our time. Trying to sell this. Five hours. Five hours we've been here trying to sell this. Have we had any calls? Well, we've had a few. Sorry. None. Five hours. I mean, Five you... hours we've been trying to sell this thing. You could have chipped in earlier. Right, come on then. What a waste of time that was. Absolute waste of Let's time. Let's answer Matthew's question. Well, there is the curious fact of a very brave monkey soldier. Meet Jackie. Brave, loyal, honourable, a hero, a soldier, a monkey. Jackie the Baboon fought during the First World War and gained a reputation as reliable soldier and trusted companion to his master, Private Albert Marr. Hello, friend. <laughs> Towards the end of the war, the much-loved platoon baboon lost a leg in the battle, but made a complete recovery and was even awarded a medal for bravery. So there you have it. Jackie, a first-rate primate, a true hero, a real-life, Monkey Soldier. That's nearly the answer. We're almost finally nearly there. That was a monkey soldier, but what we need to do is find a flying monkey soldier. Look no further, Mr. Reeves. There was a curious monkey who flew and he worked for the US government. Tell me more. In 1961, Ham the Chimp was sent up into space and controlled the space rocket during flight. He'd been trained by receiving rewards of banana pellets whenever he pulled the correct levers. A flying monkey! A space monkey! Imagine that! I can't. I'm trying to, but I can't. Space ape, space ape. Guardian of the future. Astral primate, primate. Monkey style space cruiser. 
flying so high with your air supply Into mañana, mi trabajo para nada Space, 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 space Gatchen, of the future Astral primate, primate, primate Monkey style, space cruiser Flying so high with your air supply Into mañana, mi trabajo para nada Space, space, space Let us down Humanity depends on you So, I think we've proved that you can have a flying monkey and you can have a monkey soldier but never the twain shall meet So could you get those facts off to Matthew as quickly as possible? Thank you, Mr. Tea Party Yes, Mr. Reeves Attention, Ministry The working day is over Reassessing curious stuff. Clara asked, can you dance on the moon? And we found out. You could only survive for around 30 seconds in space without oxygen. Your lungs rip apart, your saliva boils, and you freeze to death. Sounds disgusting! In 1971, astronaut Alan Shepard played golf on the moon. Oh! The golf balls are still there. You should never trump in a space suit. The smell can't get out. You'll be stuck with it all the way home. There's no sound in space, and because of low gravity, any movements would be very slow. So, the answer is you can dance on the moon if you did it very slowly, in a spacesuit, to no music. Next, Camilla wanted to know, can you eat poo? We found out. Oh, sorry. Us humans spend an average of three years of our life on the toilet. Get up! Baby elephants will often eat their own mother's poo. Eat it all, and you can have dessert. Civic coffee is a drink made from coffee beans that have been eaten and pooed out by a civet. So I've been drinking poo out of a weasel. So, Camilla, you can eat poo if you're an elephant, but humans should never eat poo. I repeat, never, ever eat poo. Finally, Matthew asked, do flying monkey soldiers exist? We found out. Parrots were used to spot enemy aircraft during World War I. It's a marvellous piece of equipment. Yeah. There was a monkey soldier called Jackie, a baboon who fought in the First World War. And there was a flying monkey. Ham the Chimp flew a rocket in space in 1961. So to answer Matthew's question, flying monkeys and monkey soldiers have existed. But to our knowledge, there are no flying monkey soldiers. Sorry. Anyway, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, team. Bye-bye. Transportation ready for Mr. Reeves. Goodbye, 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 Mr. Reeves. Stand back, everyone. I'm going up for me team. Howdy folks! Hey, you know Ed Petrie? Well he really has been all over the place. There's even an interactive map to prove it. Check it out on the CBBC website where you can see all the videos of the places he's visited. Hey Ed, wait on! Have we got room for a small one? That one. What are you doing? I'm dancing on the moon. Okay, that was Ministry of Curious Stuff. Uh, still come home with histories, but right now, time for this, guys. Sell your home. Town. <laughs> You've been telling us about your hometown. You've got one here from Becky. Hi, I think you should come to Lickfield. Lichfield? Lichfield, indeed. Because it was the birthplace of Samuel Johnson who created Ooh. the first dictionary. Now. We know a book, don't we? Yeah, a very famous dictionary, don't we? Yeah, Richard Chenery, I believe. Richard Chenery! Oh. I mean, he's yeah. not brilliant or anything. He's not the best, but we know. No, no! no. We've wasted all that time on Richard Chenery. I've got all these emails and no time to read them out. If only the know we could sort of whistle stop through them. And then... Whistle stop too! Is that what oh, yeah. <laughs> is, is the word? <laughs> Isabel, you should come to Cope in Ireland because there was where the Titanic had its last stop before it sank. Whistle stop too! <gasps> Next one is from Leo, it says come to the LOI because we have a really good theme park with lots of rides and we make cheese. Whistle stop too! <gasps> one from Kate, Ian and I could come to Bath because it's full of Roman. 
Empress. Bah. Where's the stop, John? Bah.